Organic Table Grapes present a lucrative new alternative crop for small to mid-range producers in southwest Idaho. Powdery mildew is the single most economically important disease threatening growers' ability to achieve high-quality, marketable fruit. Organic Table Grape production is a good match for southwest Idaho's rapidly changing agricultural landscape. Population has increased over 30% since 2000. Farms are downsizing, and producers want successful alternative crops to diversify operations and generate income. Western Idaho, table grapes have become a hot commodity, and a lot of uh, um, small acreage owners and, uh, and farmers have, have retrofitted their um, farms to grow more table grapes. Mike Meads of Rocky Fence Vineyard is one such grower with his own story of how he started farming in this region. Well, we liked the land, we liked the image, and we had an opportunity to purchase the 20 acres here that was in fruit trees, but they were not watered for four years, and it was kind of abandoned orchard. And so we bought the, the orchard, and then we had to uh, plow down all the, the trees, and then we we were thinking of what to use the land for and decide on grapes. For Meads, the decision to grow and market his grapes organically was a simple one. The market, I, I researched the market and I figured I had to get an organic price for the grapes uh, for the, all the expense of farming. Uh, I just figured I'd better go organic and, uh, and get the higher price for the grapes. Another nice thing about being organic is my grandson can eat grapes right out the vine, and in the never in the workers. And it's just a health thing. Is I'm really proud, and I, I feel a lot more comfortable now being organic. And Meads found that he was well suited to growing table grapes and good at marketing. As his vines reached maturity, he secured several lucrative contracts with major area retailers and distributors. But in 2007, powdery mildew stopped his plans short. It came on in July, heavy, and then I, I couldn't stop it. And so we had to stop picking and I was out of business. Powdery mildew is a, um, is a fungal disease, that means it's caused by a fungus. And there are several powdery mildews. The name powdery mildew is a very uh, group name. It's the name of a group of diseases. All of them uh, have some similar characteristics. But there are individual powdery mildews are very distinct from each other um, based on some characteristics of the fungus or sometimes based on uh, which plants they infect. So when we come to this uh, powdery mildew of grapes, uh, it is a fungal disease but it infects basically uh, grapes and some related uh, um, plants. It's a problem in 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 almost all the European grapes, white is vinifera grapes, uh, they are mostly, most of them are uh, susceptible. That means uh, they can easily be infected and the fungus can uh, really uh, cause significant damage, uh, both in terms of the uh, yield by reducing the photosynthetic area in the leaves, so you get less yield, or even affecting the quality of the uh, berries. Mike Meads knew something needed to change or he'd have to stop farming. So in fall 2007, he approached University of Idaho Extension educators Ariel Agenbrod and Tony McCammon about partnering on a Western Region Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education Professional Plus Producer Grant. The, the Western Sarah Producer Plus Professional Grant Program allows unique partnerships to form between producers and educators or researchers. Uh, it's also unique because it gives a great deal of the funding to the producer to do the work. So I needed some financial assistance because I knew what it would take to fight the powder and mildew. Agenbrod and McCammon enlisted the expertise of local specialists. You know, we, got, we got Krishna Mohan, uh, extension specialist out of the Parma Research and Extension Center. He's the um, uh, pathologist and uh, he uh, he was uh, very helpful in, in, in you know helping us know a, a lot more and helping Mike know understand uh, the pathogen of powdery mildew a lot a lot better. Uh, we also involved uh, Essie Falahi, also a, a pomologist and extension specialist from the Parma Research and Extension Center and he was also influential in, in, 
and he's done he's done quite a bit in promoting and, and researching um, this this growth of the table grape industry here in southwestern Idaho. Another great resource um, for this project. A proposal was developed to address several important factors. Well, first of all, the big investment had to be made in improving my trellis system. So what brought on the pottery mildew was a lot of things, but the major thing was my trellis system was uh, antiquated. It was a very poor system and it, 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 it was just perfect for powdery mildew. So basically I had to get the grapes up up higher and out farther, uh, open it up and get some air and sun into the grapes basically. So I knew that'd be expensive because my system I have, uh, had at the time, I had short T-poles. And so uh, we had to make extensions and, mod and uh, kind of modify the system and more wires and, and things like that. So that was a, a big investment. And, and then we had to research the uh, spraying. The proposal was awarded funding in early 2008 and the team began to work on an aggressive strategy of prevention. The first step was to change the existing vineyard trellis system. So, but basically, when uh, you have a system with uh, just one uh, one or uh, one wire above the arm or two and it's short these canes uh, overlap on each other and then touch the ground and make a greenhouse the new trellis design implemented at rocky fence incorporated canopy management systems from california vineyards that use what is called an expanded y trellis with arms extended four feet apart so this is a an an arbor that I use, it's about uh, four feet wide and it's very effective in getting the, the grape canes up and out <clears throat> so that it's open underneath and you can see uh, we have good sunlight and good air movement uh, so as long as you can see some daylight uh, through the, the, the grapes the chances are pretty good you won't get the powdery mildew, so you have, you have to open it up. Opening up the trellis is important, but Meads is careful not to overdo it on some green varieties. Well, I, I can't open it up too much, uh, otherwise the, the grapes will get sunburned. And, uh, but I do have to open it up somewhere I'll get powdery mildew. Another important benefit of the expanded trellis system is that it allows for more effective use of organic preventative sprays. So, Early detection and starting the program uh, in a um, preventive fashion early enough and using the right type of spray interval or application interval is very important in keeping this disease under control. One group of chemicals that's very effective for uh, powdery mildews is um, sulfur, sulfur-based products or sulfur, product, sulfur itself in various formulations. The use of sulfur sprays is one of the most important tools an organic grower can use when powdery mildew has been a problem. Meads first applies a dormant spray of lime sulfur or horticultural oil in early spring to eliminate fungal structures that may have overwintered on the canes. He then moves to a recommended six gallons per acre of wettable sulfur after bud break and continues every seven to 14 days while the disease pressure is high. This is my rear air blast sprayer. So I get good coverage when we're trying to control powdery mildew. So during the dormant stage of the plant, I, I apply a dormant oil, or you can apply sulfur. I've done that, but not together, separately. And so, but it's very important, whatever you use, that you get good coverage. And I've been real happy with the air blast sprayer because I can um, have like three nozzles will be sufficient and I have uh, 175 pounds of pressure and then the, the fan blows it out so it circulates the uh, spray in the vineyard very well. Once temperatures reach 85 degrees Fahrenheit, sulfur must be discontinued on grapes because of the high risk of leaf burn. At that point, a grower has a few options available. There are some biological control products also, but 
Most of them may not stand by themselves alone as uh, one type of spray. You may have to keep uh, alternating or repeating. So you may have to use sulfur and some other product uh, if it is available in the organic system. Uh, but uh, most of the other products uh, are not standalone products uh, that can give you season-long uh, control, effective control. Whereas sulfur can do that. Sulfur is very known to be very effective for uh, powdery mildews in general, and of course powdery mildew of uh, uh, grapes. Some of the late season organic controls include JMS Stylet Oil and biological bacteria sprays that include Bacillus pumilus and Bacillus subtilis. Okay, now after it warms up late June, early July, then I switch over to a biofungicide. So I'm no longer spraying sulfur and I'm, I'm switching over earlier in the season now so I don't have to apply as much sulfur. So what I do is I just buy a biofungicide, actually it's a bacteria in a bottle, and then I inoculate compost tea with that. So the compost tea I brew up mostly for food for this bacteria, to, uh, so I have a large count of bacteria. I'm just experimenting, we just got a, a used jacuzzi tub, and we uh, take a, a, a game bag, you know what, you get a sporting goods store, and uh, you gotta kind of convince them that you're not poaching. But anyway, you get this game bag and then you put the compost in it and tie tie it up like a tea bag. And then I put it in the jacuzzi tub full of water, turn on the jacuzzi, and I usually run it for 24 hours. Meads then uses approximately two five-gallon buckets full of tea inoculated with the bacteria in a 300-gallon sprayer and applies at the rate of five gallons per acre about every 10 days. Through funding provided by this project, Meads has been working with microbiologists at Oregon Soil Food Web Lab to determine the most biologically active composts to brew and has been experimenting with brewing techniques that will provide maximum coverage. As the scientists tell me that by spraying that bacteria on the leaves, then it, uh, it's hard for powdery mildew to exist. I guess they compete. They, don't know why. I've done it for over two years and it works. So. Happy with it. Yeah. One of the most significant results of this research project was discovering that prevention went a really long way in, in solving the powdery mildew problem. If we could prevent the mildew fungus from even getting a toehold in the vineyard, then we didn't have to worry about some of the more complicated disease modeling tools or some of the more expensive or more difficult to use chemistry because we just kept it out. Our overall goal was prevention of powdery mildew at all costs. And so perhaps we didn't get to explore everything that we wanted to in the program, uh, but the, the good thing was that we didn't have the powdery mildew. And so that overall was the big success of this project. The sales have increased threefold. So, I mean, there are a drastic increase in sales. Well, half the crop last year went to Taiwan, uh, and, and some of that went to Singapore. So our export business is doing really well. And, and that's because they value organic grapes. And so the price we're getting there is, uh, makes it profitable. Yeah, a local market, uh, we've had to use distributors. And so we've uh, gotten into Walmart, uh, Albertsons, uh, Fred Meyers, and uh, Boise Co-op, and other good local stores. And then, uh, and we also have a real potential, we're pretty close to working out details with the Boise School District to supply the kids with our local grapes. So that's exciting because I've always 
wanted to have kids eat our grapes, and that's neat. So, uh, and I hope that goes through. Mike also sees the bigger picture of how this project can affect other producers in the region in positive ways. Yeah, well, this helps uh, getting an industry going for grapes is because now when we learn how to get grapes to the market and be able to control powdery mildew, uh, we have really a great tasting grape here in Idaho. And so I think it's very be very marketable uh, because uh, the, our grapes have a distinct uh, flavor and color. We have a brighter color, uh, a, cr a firm grape, and if, if the other producers can get the grapes fresh to buyers, I think they can beat out all the competition. I've, I've used this research uh, from this project um, in, in helping new growers that have come in and, and put in you know, 10 acres here or 15 acres here, um, just to say, you know, there, there are people that have been very successful because people are always coming to me and saying, can I do this organically? People want to do stuff organically, but they just think it's impossible. And I can, I have, I have Mike Meads, I can say he's done it and he can, uh, he can show you the way. Um, you know, really, really look, look at some of his procedures and, and he's got it down to a science. And it's good to have a grower that, uh, that, that's kind of led the way uh, for the rest of us. Powdery mildew is just one issue that table grape growers in southwest Idaho have to manage. But the experience gained and relationships formed throughout this project have created a network of support to help growers and horticultural professionals work collaboratively to solve future issues successfully. One thing I learned is when I have a serious problem, you know, there's people that will help. And so that's a big thing with Sarah. I have a wonderful program. I wouldn't be able to continue if I didn't have assistance from them. So it's, it's comforting, you know, that there are organizations that can help a small farmer when they get in real trouble.